Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? All right, it's official. Uh, Kevin Stefanski told reporters Monday that Jameis Winston will remain Cleveland's starter. DT, uh, of course, we all know that um, Deshaun Watson out for the season with a torn Achilles. Uh, Second-year quarterback Dorian Thompson-Robinson from UCLA, LSU fan, should remember him, uh, was the backup the last two games for Jameis. Jameis started. Jameis will continue to start, meaning Jameis will start on Sunday in the Dome against the Saints, the place where he's been since the 2020 COVID season. So four years in New Orleans, now Jameis the backup in Cleveland, but he'll be the starter uh, this weekend. And what's what I think is going to be interesting as we move through this week to delve deeper into is you know, which, which Jameis we see. So Winston on the season is, uh, he's completed just under 60% of his passes for 652 yards. He's got five touchdowns and three interceptions. As they say, it is the Jameis Winston experience. So Jameis went out there and... Played well in the first game in, in, a, in place of Deshaun Watson. They beat the Ravens 29-24. And then they were home against the Chargers and got blasted 27-10 to against the best scoring defense in the NFL. And Jameis didn't have a particularly great day. He was 26-46 for 235, a touchdown and three picks because that is the Jameis Winston experience and why the Saints elected not to invest in Jameis Winston as their franchise in part. Now, I am not a Derek Carr believer, and if you gave me the choice between Jameis or Derek Carr, I would take Jameis over Derek Carr. Uh, more affordable option, roughly the same guy, maybe a little higher ceiling with Jameis, but they are what they are. Um, but you will see Jameis in the Dome. That'll be an interesting uh, emotional dynamic because he was beloved here as the backup and really embraced the city like a lot of have, like Teddy Bridgewater before him. I mean, there have been some really popular backup quarterbacks here so I believe Jameis will be very well received when he comes to the Dome on Sunday. Meanwhile, uh, the Saints are trying to make it two in a row. Darren Rizzi met with reporters, and he was pretty clear. Man, it was pretty good to hear him say, you know, one of the big differences from that seven-game losing streak to this week when, of course, they, they beat Atlanta and snapped that streak was how the players really uh, took it upon themselves to turn this thing around this week. When the players take ownership of the locker room and the players kind of take ownership of the team, great things can happen. Anything can happen. The, the sky's the limit. And so when you got guys like Honey Badger and Demario and Cam and AK and, and Derek and some of these veteran players that are able to look at their performance and say, man, I could, I could do better. I could perform better. I could do this better. There's things I need to work on, and and uh, it's great, you know. And so, th- you know, he's obviously got a lot of respect in that locker room. So when he's able to stand up in front of everybody, people listen, you know. People listen to what he has to say. And so, when when you have a guy like that being the example, I'd step out of the way. So one of the guys he mentioned there, of course, was Cam Cam Jordan, who got his first sack of the season. Took ten games to get it, but got his first sack of the season on Sunday against Atlanta. And the question that was asked of Rizzy, like. Were you making a more concerned effort to get Cam Jordan involved? There was a conscious decision to get him more involved. Every game plan is going to play out a little bit different. With the D-line rotation, it depends on kind of who you're playing, their personnel. I think to get yesterday's game was very conducive to Cam. I think he executed very well. Quite frankly, I, I think probably Cam, if you talk to the defensive coaches, and, and from what I saw from watching the film, Cam probably had his best performance this year. Uh, and it's not only the, you know, a couple, he made a couple of splash plays, just the whole 40 plays that he played were good. But yeah, I mean, listen, that's going to be, that may fluctuate week to week. Probably want to definitely get him more than 10 like he had the week before. And somewhere, you know, 40, 40 might be, you know, his max there. But so he kind of maxed him out yesterday. But no, listen, all good. I thought he played very well. Um. So Cam Jordan's snap count could go up a little bit. Another guy who uh, snap count most certainly will go up is Eric McCoy. Uh, interesting news, if you missed it on the waiver wire, the Saints have waived center Connor McGovern. Um, McGovern had started the last five games at center for the Saints, and very, very clearly the Saints waiving McGovern is an indicator that Eric McCoy is coming back. They activated McCoy's uh, practice window. Shane Lemieux also back from uh, IR last week who, remember, Lemieux started after McCoy got hurt. When Lemieux was injured is when they brought McGovern in, signed him I mean, signed him off, off the street, and within a couple of days he was playing on Monday Night Football against Kansas City Chiefs. But it uh, looks like McCoy, the, the original target date for McCoy's return was Week 13 against the Rams. 
But Ross Jackson over at Louisiana Sports.net was reporting all along that McCoy was trying to accelerate that timeline. It looks like it could be this week before the bye against the Cleveland Browns. So stay tuned, but waving Connor McGovern means you very could likely be in line to get Eric McCoy back this week. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.